Number four, love is a fruit. Love is a fruit. In Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23, Paul writes that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness or gentleness, self-control or temperance, depending on the Bible translation you're using, okay? Now, some have said the fruit, notice it says the fruit, singular, not the fruit, plural. The fruit, singular, not the fruits, plural, yet there are nine things mentioned. There is a consensus that suggests that the fruit of the Spirit is love. And everything else mentioned alongside it are its ingredients. So therefore, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And when you squeeze love, what comes out, what spurts out is joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. So when somebody says they love you, you want to look at what they're spurting when you squeeze them. When you say you love somebody, the person is to examine what comes out of you when you are squeezed. Is it joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control? In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, which is known as the love chapter, in verse 4, we are told that love is patient and kind, and we hear that love does not insist on its own way, letting us know that it's gentle. And those are, those are some of the same attributes mentioned in Galatians 5, so it could argue that truly, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, and everything mentioned alongside it are its ingredients. Now you might be listening and saying, Tokes, man, this is rough. This is rough. Love is the decision I make. It's not based on the way I feel. Love is a sacrifice. Love is unconditional. Tokes, man, that's a lot. I don't know if I'm ready. I, I don't know if I can do this. Relax. I told you love is a fruit, which means there's room for development. Fruits grow. The Bible says in Romans 5.5, 5, the second part of Romans 5.5, 5, that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts or being poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who God has given to us. Therefore, when we allow the Holy Spirit who has deposited, by the way, everyone has a deposit of the love fruit inside of them. If you receive Jesus into your heart, then you have the Holy Spirit to a degree, and he has deposited the fruit of love inside of you. And as, as you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, because Galatians uh, 5.16 talks about walk in the Spirit, which means be led by the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then he goes on to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, when you are led by the Spirit, this is what manifests in your life. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, and all that good stuff, okay? So as long as you let God lead you, then God can allow that fruit to grow in you. In John chapter 15, verse 5, I believe it says, Jesus, the speaker, the love, the person through whom we understand what love is, says, if you abide in me and I in you, you will be a fruit. In fact, it says you will be a much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay? So if we want to grow in love, we want to... Be loving like God wants us to love. We have to stay connected and attached to Jesus, the vine. And he provides the spiritual sap that flows through us and nourishes us to bear fruit and grow in love so that we can have the love that we can love others with. Some of you are familiar with the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4. It says, do not awaken. The second part of it says, do not awaken love until it pleases. The New Living Translation says, do not awaken love until it's right. The New Revised Standard Version says, do not awaken love until it is ready. Love is a fruit. Let it grow. Let it grow. I'm thinking of that movie with let it snow, let it snow, let it go, let it go. Let but it I'm saying, let it grow. So every time you think of that song, put grow in it. Let it grow. Let the fruit grow. Mm -hmm. 